Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Well, then, as, as children of God, we have a purpose here on this earth. We have a purpose to, to live for Him and to, to be a totally and completely obedient to, to the Word of God. Now, we learn those lessons from the Word of God and, and exactly what He has uh, told us to do, but a lot of what we learned, we saw in the life of Christ and how He demonstrated those things uh, really, from the time that he was a little boy all the way uh, to uh, his death, burial, and resurrection. And so, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Jesus showed us in his life. Uh, in, in Luke chapter 2, we see uh, this famous uh, quote that, we are, er, that, we're, that we're talking about today. Right. Uh, in Luke chapter 2, verse 49, and he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house or... In some translations, will say about my father's business. Right. In verse fifty, they did not understand what he was uh, saying. That he spoke to them, and he went down, came to Nazareth, and was submissive to them, continuing on there. Um, but uh, really, being about uh, the father's business to me is being about uh, your your person of humility. Uh, you humble yourself, and Jesus was a again the best example of this. Absolutely. Uh, in John chapter thirteen. Uh, we see that he washes his disciples' feet, knowing what was about to come. Uh, specifically, verse 16 of, Luke, or of John, chapter 13. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. And this is, again, a true act of humility. Um, though Jesus had a, many, many acts of humility in his life, uh, probably the, the one that influenced or really influences us or affected us the most uh, comes from Luke 22. And in Luke 22, uh, we see here, starting in verse 39, he goes to the Mount of Olives to pray. Uh, and he takes his disciples with him, but he, he re, uh, recluses himself from the rest of his disciples, and he, pray, and he prays the most iconic prayer. In verse 42 of Luke 22, the Bible reads, saying, Father, if you are willing Remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. This is one of, if not the, best act of humility that Jesus ever had or performed in his life. Yeah, it's it's really important for us to understand that that really that statement there in in, in the prayer, which you know he prayed over and over again. Uh, he didn't just pray this once; he prayed yeah. this several times. That as he prayed this prayer there to God. He shows his submission to the will of the Father. You know, he knew from a time he was a little boy, he knew where he needed to be. Mm -hmm. He knew he needed to be in the Father's house. He knew he needed to be about the Father's business. Um, and he let his blood relatives, you know, his, you know, those that were there, his brothers, sisters, mother, father, all of them, know who he was living for and who mm -hmm. he was supposed to be living for. As Christians today, I think that that's an important lesson for us to share, not only with our families, but with the entire world. Uh, who are we living for? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter uh, chapter 12 and verse 13 uh, kind of discusses this uh, as far as what our purpose is yeah. here on earth. We are to fear God and keep his commandments. And in fact, it, it says that, that is to be man's all, you know. So we are to be completely and totally about fearing God and keeping his, his commandments. Well, how do we do that? Well, first, we know who God is. We, we come to know who he is. That, that's, that's, the, that's that first aspect of fear. We, we recognize who he is. We understand our position before him. And therefore, we respond in respect. We respond in fear. We respond in love. We respond in obedience. Uh, and that goes in, ties in to keeping his commandments. He has laid commandments before us. His commandments are not burdensome. Uh, his mm -hmm. commandments are there for us, to, and actually, if everyone would recognize how, how much his commandments will actually help us. See, God's commandments are not just things that we do to necessarily be pleasing to him. They actually have great benefits yeah. here on earth, uh, you know, and they keep our lives wholesome and healthy. And we need to recognize that uh, as we live our Christian lives, that we are to be about his will, his work, and be obedient to him. And if we will do that, then we will truly be servants of God. See, that's what Jesus was. He was the epitome of what it meant to be a servant. Um, that uh, example that, that you read moments ago about him humbling himself 
uh, to wash his disciples' feet. Here was God in the flesh who had already been born uh, in, into a, a kind of a, uh, a lowly family. Uh, he was uh, from Nazareth. And so, you know, the, the, the joke was, can, basically, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, that was kind of the joke. But this was Jesus in the flesh. He was God in the flesh. And as he lived and as he grew, he continued to show that humility, that servant uh, mindedness and everything that he that he did and that's what we need to do we need to be servants like jesus was a servant and we need to serve the one true god and as we do so he will be exalted he will yeah. be lifted up he will receive all the praise and all the glory and our life will basically say what jesus life said uh we're about the father's will exactly uh, and because of that servanthood and that jesus or that jesus portrayed and the the servanthood we're supposed to portray or portray uh look at what he did uh because of what jesus did look at what he did for us and in mark chapter 15 verse 37 jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom the centurion who stood facing him, saw that this way, he breathed his last and said, truly this man is the son of God. And that temple that was ripped in two allowed us to see the true father.